The story you're about to hear is a compilation of documented true facts about historical characters, events, or locations. Please sit back and listen as I narrate this story to you. Three families, including the Koi Kindles, began receiving strange phone calls from an unknown source in February 2007. Courtney Koi Kindles' phone began acting strangely and began sending text messages to her friends and family. When she looked at this text, she was met with messages from her friends asking why they had received text messages from her that simply said gay. One might think it was a stupid immature prank on Courtney's part except for one thing. She did not send those texts, at least not herself. She brushed it off, mildly perplexed as to what they were talking about. It was strange, but it didn't seem too concerning at that time. The family chalked it up to interference or a cell phone carrier glitch. Soon after, Courtney and her friends and family began receiving threatening text messages and phone calls from an unknown person whom they all later referred to as restricted, named so after the word that appeared on their caller ID whenever these calls happened. Restricted would regularly threaten to kill or rape their targets, attack the school they attended, and even threaten to kill their pets as soon as they began their calls. According to Courtney's mother, Heather, a scratchy voice called every day, sometimes threatening to slit the throats of the entire family. The messages became so frequent that they were received around the clock on both the family's landlines and cell phones. Everyone affected what as far as switching phones, changing their numbers, turning their phones off, and opening new accounts to stop restricted harassment. But nothing seemed to slow restricted down. Courtney and her family had finally had enough of the harassment when they called the police. And while they were explaining their situation to an officer, all their phones turned on and called each other. The officers listened to the calls and attempted to determine where they came from. When the trace was returned, the phone calls appeared to have originated from Courtney's phone. At another point, the Koi Kendals had just returned home from meeting with law enforcement about their phone calls when they discovered they'd had a voicemail containing a recording of the exact conversation from earlier that day. Courtney's parents confiscated her phone believing she was involved in the harassment, but this did not stop the harassment. To make matters worse, the family discovered that, in addition to listening to everything they said, Restricted appeared to be able to see them even when they were inside their home. After they purchased a new security system keypad for their home, Restricted called them moments later to inform them that they knew the passcode to it. Restricted, among other things, made comments about the family's clothing. Restricted's most infamous code came in response to one of their victims, Andrea McKay, who was cutting limes on the counter one time, and Restricted responded by messaging her simply to say how they preferred lemons. An unknown person banged on the side of the family's house one night before fleeing into the night. Taping their camera lenses and even removing the batteries from their phones had failed to deter the stalker at this point. However this person was and whatever their motivations were, they appeared to be in the opposite position of their given nickname. It got worse. Now, the phone calls and messages were coming from other family members' phones as well. These phones would also turn on on their own and the ringtones and phone settings would change on a regular basis. The police were called out several times. They received a voicemail of the house's conversations, including a recorded conversation with police during one visit. For four months, the phone calls, messages, and strange phone behavior continued every night before abruptly ceasing. Nobody was ever apprehended. There is a theory that Courtney staged the incident. It was her phone and she could have done it to get on TV. Courtney has defended herself saying, Why would I do that to people I care about? Why would I harass my own family? Her mother has also vehemently defended her daughter. Another theory contends that Restricted obtained access to the phones via hacking or a virus. They could have done it with inside help by smuggling the phones out to give to Restricted to mess with or even by one of the victims unknowingly assisting Restricted. Like Courtney, for example, unwittingly reinfecting her new phone by visiting her MySpace page. Theories differ on how the entire crime could have been accomplished technologically in 2007. How likely was it that it would turn on and send messages or calls without you being present? Some military-grade technology would have been required to accomplish this feat, but it would have been extremely difficult to obtain physical access to it. 
Interestingly, Courtney and her family did live near McCord Air Force Base and her brother-in-law worked there. At one point, he reportedly received a text from Restricted that said, McCord needs us. However, it's possible that Restricted was just messing around rather than providing a true clue to their identity. Other, less technologically sophisticated methods Restricted could have used to spy on their victims included physically looking through their windows or texting with someone in the next room. A law enforcement official involved in the case suggested that a tech-savvy teenage boy could have been responsible. While that may be true, it could also be said if Restricted stalked the family using more traditional methods. It could have been some elaborate hoax concocted by the family, but they weren't the only ones. Two other families on the same block had similar experiences. These families knew each other but would they all choose to make things up as a group? Phone companies insisted the stalking was impossible, while local police were perplexed by the calls. They had no leads and had no idea how the caller could pull this off. The police even conducted their own investigation into the family. Courtney's phone had been taken away from her but the calls continued. So what is a plausible explanation? Spoofing is a technique that allows a hacker to manipulate or conceal the phone number when calling. It's possible that this is what allowed the caller to make the messages appear to have come from Courtney's phone. Surprisingly, spoofing a phone is not that difficult. The only way to prevent this is to have up-to-date phone security software or to use a VPN service to conceal your IP address. Spoofing, on the other hand, does not allow someone to change the phone's settings. To accomplish this, the caller would have to remotely hack the phone. This is known as cloning and it creates a virtual copy of the victim's phone, giving the caller access to Courtney's phone just as she did. However, even spoofing and cloning a phone would not allow someone to record conversations and turn off the phone. This would entail hacking the courier directly to gain access to these conversations. This is no easy task. If this was a hack, it was extremely complex for everything to happen in such a short period of time. Why would anyone want to do this to a regular suburban family? Hey everyone! I just wanted to express how grateful I am that you took time out of your day to listen to my narration. This is Nikki of Twisted Mind, and I'd like to wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Salamat.